Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name is John Finch. We've looked at a lot of developers on the channel so far. Metal, Pyro, Vitamin C developers. But one class of developer we haven't looked at yet, and that is the two bath developer. The one we're going to look at today is the Barry Thornton Metal two bath developer. Now, why would I introduce two bath developers now on the channel? Well, there's three good reasons. One, two bath developers use pretty much the same development time for all films. So from my Pan F plus through to my HP five plus, I can use four and a half minutes with Barry Thornton's two bath. Secondly, they're a compensating developer. So where the highlights are very high and maybe even outside the principal range of the paper, the two bath will help bring them down and make it much easier for me to print far less burning to do to try and bring those highlights down. But there's probably one differentiator that I want you to know about that really to me makes the difference and why you would use a two bath in your darkroom. And that is because each frame is individually developed. So here's the Barry Thornton two bath developer, bath A and bath B. Let's see how to make this first of all. Well, we use metal and sodium sulfite anhydrous to make the bath A, similar to D23, but not the same. We use 6.5 grams of metal, and we use 80 grams of sodium sulfite anhydrous per liter. Slightly less, isn't it, than D23? It's still a developer in its own right, though. And the important thing to take on board with this is the lower amount of sodium sulfite by reducing it from D23's 100 grams down to Barry Thornton's 80 grams. He has increased the sharpness of the developer. The Bath B is just an accelerator and Barry Thornton preferred to use sodium metaborate. Now sodium metaborate is a balanced alkali it's a buffered alkali. It means that it can maintain its alkalinity for longer. And that allows this to develop 15 films in total using just these two amounts here. How do I use it? Well, bath A and bath B must never get mixed together. So keep them separate. Be very careful to do that. First of all, I would measure my bath A and B out in two separate beakers and make sure they're at the right temperature. I always use 20 centigrade in UK. And you could use higher, you'd have to change your time slightly. So for 20 centigrade, I would pour in bath A, no pre-wash. And I would agitate for the first 30 seconds and then five seconds every 30 seconds. I call this Kodak agitation the same way you would agitate D23. With FP4, I do that for four and a half minutes. At the end of the four and a half minutes, pour out bath A into its own beaker and keep that separate and pour in bath B. You don't wash between the two. With bath B in, you now agitate for five seconds and then let it stand for a minute. And each minute, another five seconds. So four and a half minutes as well. At the end of that, you can then pour B out into it, its own beaker, because they're both reusable. So pour them into their own beakers and then stop and fix as normal. It's a regular developer, so you can stop with a stop bath. That's okay. You're not gonna have any problems with this. What does it do? What does it give me? Why would I use this developer? Well, I think I've mentioned it already that the most important part of this for me is the way it develops each frame individually. If the frame is a low contrast photograph, it will increase the contrast of that photograph because the developer that's left in the emulsion when you pour bath B into it will continue to develop the highlights up and up and up and up until they're finished. If the frame is a high contrast frame, then when you pour bath B into it, the emulsion still containing some developer will develop away 
and the highlights that are that are very high, the high contrast highlights, will stop developing very quickly because the bath B is wasted in that region of the negative. The rest of the negative continues to develop as normal. So there's a natural compensation going on with high contrast negatives and there's an increase or an expansion going on with low contrast negatives. Now, if you're like me and you use a film on multiple subjects before development, I have all these different contrasts going on in all my negatives. So a two bath developer like this will help me make printable negatives out of all of them. And you know, I don't have to think about anything. I don't have to think about extending development times or reducing development times or any of that because this does it all for me. FP4 is four and a half minutes and four and a half minutes. If I use Pan F, it's four minutes and four minutes. If I use HP5, it's five minutes and five minutes. It's that simple. So let's have a look at this negative. This is an FP4 35 millimeter negative. I took it with a Nikon FM and their 35 millimeter F2 lens. It's a nice contrast. Now it was a pretty flat day. It was raining at the time. I think you can see that down here in the water. There's raindrops hitting the water. But it's quite nice the way it's developed this frame. It has compensated where it needed to in these highlights that could easily have been burned out. But there's plenty of detail kept into these highlights. And it's also developed nicely in the shadows. You can see the shadows are full. They're detailed. I like that. That's a really nice developer. It's sharp. I focused on this area here of the bridge and you can see it's a very sharp developer. Now, it's not an acutance developer, but it's sharp and it's sharp because Barry Thornton lowered the sodium sulfite level to 80 grams, which increases the sharpness. If you like, it's a sharper D23 with added compensation. So really nice negative. I'm very pleased with that. Let's see how it prints. So here's the print. It's in the fix and it's finished fixing. So let's take a look. And you know, that is a nice print. That's really nice. Now I haven't done any dodging or burning with this print at all. It's a straight print at grade three which is perfect for 35 millimeter negatives. Let me get it in the wash and we'll take a closer look. She's been in the wash water now for 10 minutes and she is looking really sweet. Look at that. Slightly light, but I expect dry down, which should put it smack bang in the right area. It's a lovely image. I do like the compensation here, the way it's not too bright that it's burned out the reflections in the water. You can even see the little raindrops hitting the water very clearly, very nice, sharp, a sharp print. Very pleased with that. Let's hang that up to dry. Well, it's dried. And it's looking really nice. That dry down did take care of that slight lightness. It's always a little disconcerting when I take the print out of the water and it looks a little bit too light, but you've got to be confident it will dry down. It will get a little bit dark and it's looking really good. I'm very pleased with this print. Barry Thornton 2 Bath. I recommend it to so many people. It's such a straightforward developer to use. Let's look at the advantages again. Development times are very simple. Four minutes for a slow film, five minutes for a fast film, four and a half for something in the middle. You can develop all your films at the same time, four and a half minutes, put them all in together, four and a half minutes in A, followed by four and a half minutes in B. It's a compensating developer, so it does look after highlights for you and helps you not to have to do so much dodging and burning. And it develops each frame individually. It looks at each frame and it expands it if it's flat and it contracts it a little bit if it's too contrasty. 
it's almost like having Ansel Adams in your developing tank. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to next week. And don't forget, there's a tip every Friday. So why don't you subscribe to the channel? Give me a thumbs up and I'll see you later.